Hello everyone. In today's session, we are going to discuss about proportional logic in artificial intelligence. Uh, so last session we have discussed about Umpa's world problem and how you are going to create a knowledge base out of it. Okay, a knowledge base is something like we are going to uh, observe the percept of current environment and based on that percept, we are going to develop the new possibilities, next possible uh, resolutions or uh, what we can say like what will be the next possible safer move we can take. Okay, so you're going to create a knowledge base according to each and every move and that is logically connected using this proportional logic. Like all the statement here in this proportional logic or declarative statement. A uh, uh, declarative statement is uh, known as uh, one like which has either, which will be either true or false. For example, in the first world problem in uh, the space, like when an agent enter into a cave, he enters into the first space of one comma one. Okay, so this is the initial place he is going to enter in. Uh, in this initial place where uh, there is no breeze and no stingy smell. So these are all the notations that he is going to get it from the current environment, right? So that is called a declarative statement. Like when I say I'm in a, a room, I'm going to check whether breeze is there or not. Okay, or there is a stingy smell or not. Or what we can say there is a glitter or not the rooms that have a gold will have a glitter right so all the places it will be either yes or no we can represent a percept in terms of a boolean values so those kind of statements are called declarative statement in in a common term when i want to say it is sunny or it is rainy okay so these are all the atomic statement that will have an yes or no solution okay so if it is sunny the answer is yes if it is not sunny the answer is no it is either true or false. The statement will be either true or false. And we are going to combine all those statements using some connectives. Okay, so that is what we're going to discuss in the proportional logic. So this is the base value of your knowledge representation. Okay, this is the initial phase of your knowledge representations. And here we're going to consider only the declarative statements. Like it is like learning a language. When you are learning a language, how you're going to start? We'll start with what all the possible constants we have what all the possible variables we have, what all the possible connectives we have. That is how we usually learn a language, right? So here also proportional logic, you can consider it as a new uh, way of representation, a new language, something. So here the constant terms or whatever statement you take, it will have either true value or false value. So these two are the only possible constants that can be given to any proportional logic statement. Okay, so true can be represented like this and false can be represented to the inverted T. Okay, so this represents two and this represents false. So this is a constant. Okay, and when it comes to variable, a uh, variable is something like uh, for any one element, you're going to assign one atomic statement. Okay, for example, I can say P1 as uh, it is rainy. Okay, or P2 as it is sunny. Something like this. A single atomic statement, a declarative statement can be assigned to any variable. So these are all your variables. Uh, in case of your Umpa's world problem, I can assign this like I have the diagram for this Umpa's world for the representation. So here uh, we can declare like this is one uh, place of it. Like an agent will be in any one place and uh, the room is actually represented as in grid. Okay, so here you have uh, the cave consists of a lot of grids arranged in this uh, four cross four matrix and each grid has a specific value. Okay, so let us begin with this. So in this place, I have five possible percepts. Possible per percepts will be there might be a possibility of pit or a breeze, stinky smell or a bump or something like this, right? So what we are going to do now, for each and every percepts, we are going to assign P of 1 comma 1. It actually means that there is a pit in 1 comma 1. And there is a breeze in 1 comma 1. There is a stingy smell in 1 comma 1. Or there is a glitter in 1 comma 1. Or there is an oomphus in 1 comma 1. Okay, so these are all the possible things that a, a, a place can take. A single uh, agent's location or environment can take. Okay, so I value represents your like we can have it as PIJ or BIJ or something like this based on the representation that is needed. Okay, so with this denotion, I can say that in the initial place where I have started in 1 comma 1, there is no pit. I can represent it as negation of P11. And there is a breeze in this place. So I can say B of 2 comma 1. So there is a breeze in 2 comma 1 and there is no breeze in 1 comma 1. 
So for, with this basic elements, we can represent the uh, proportional logic statements. Okay, so these are all the called variables. Any user-defined function that is able to denote some declarative statement. Okay, so we know what is a constant, what is a variable, and next, how are you going to connect these kind of variables? When I have a lot of variables, for example, in the first box, there is no pit and there is no breeze and there is, look, all are connected using and. Okay, so here in this space, I don't have a breeze, I don't have a, a stingy smell, I, I don't have a pit and all. So all these places I can connect using and symbol. Okay, so this is a known fact I'm going to express using on connectives. Okay, and here, when I have breeze in this 2 comma 1, you may have a pit in 2 comma 2 or 3 comma 1. There might be a possibility of this or that. Okay, so these are all called connectives. So how many possible connectives we have in the proportional logic statement? Connectives, we have negation. Negation denotes the reverse of it. There is no pit negation of P. Conjunction or and disjunction or implies or biconditional. So these are all the connectives that you're going to have for any proportional logic statement. Remember the truth table. So negation is nil. Okay, when I have P, true, false. And negation P will be when it is true, it is false. When it is false, it is true. Okay, and what about your AND connection? AND connection works like when I have two variables P and Q. P and Q will work like true, true, true. The remaining things. For other possible, like both the statement has to be true for true. All the remaining things we have false. This is your AND. And for your OR, when both are false, it is false. And the remaining things you have true. Okay, logical connections. And next very important thing is implies. See, always remember implies with an example. So implies is a place of connective where it represents if, then. Okay, so I'll give you an example. Have PQ, P implies Q. We are going to draw a truth table for it. False, true, false, false. Okay, so here you can say if it is rainy, then street get wet. Okay, so this is the statement for P and this is the statement for Q. Okay, if it is raining, then street get wet. True. Whenever it is raining, the street will get wet. That is the only scenario that is given. So if it is raining, surely street should get wet. It should not be false. If the condition is true, then the result should be true. So this place, it is going to be, this is the only place where you have to make a notation. So it is if, then condition. If it is raining, surely the street should get wet. But here it is not wet. So we can say that is not possible. We can write it as false. And next one is false true or false false. You can have it as true statement. Okay, the street may get wet even if it is not raining. And it may not be raining and street is not wet also, it is possible. Okay, so these are all possibly true statement where we have to restrict it in this place. If it is raining, surely the street should be wet. That is your if-then condition. Okay, so always remember this when it comes to implies truth table. And about this biconditional truth table, uh, like it should have if and only if condition. So this is if and only if. So here your P biconditional Q will be when both are true, your result is true. When both are false, your result is true. You don't have the mix and merge of it. You can write it as false, false. Okay. So this is how we draw a, a truth table for it. This truth table is used to represent like this is the base. Using this truth table, you can represent that whether the uh, taken uh, scenario or uh, the taken example is possible or not. Okay, those possibility will be verified by this case. Okay, and um, we have something called a parse tree generation. See, when I take any expression like this, P implies Q and R. Okay, so here is a place where I have this implies uh, negation P. 
Negation P implies Q and R. All the expressions, all the connectives are given over here. So when you, it, it, you can always treat it like your normal algebraic expression like this. What will you do when you want to manipulate this? We will check the priority. And here you have the star has the highest priority. So we operate this first, merge with this, add it with this A. Okay, similar constant, you have to have it for this proportional logic statement too. The priority of your proportional logic statement is you have the negation as the highest priority. Next, you have and in or implies and biconditional comes the next. Okay, so first we have to manipulate this negation P. Negation P. I'm drawing the parse tree. Okay. And you have implies and and condition. Okay, out of this and has the highest priority. So you have to do it for and q are connected using and and you have this implies connecting these two so this is how we draw a parse tree okay when you want to uh, combine this parse tree when you want to evaluate this parse tree you have to look it like this take from left to right lowermost branch first you have p negation p q and r implies this negation p followed by Q and R and combining these two using implies. Q and R. Okay, so this is how a parse tree can be generated for any proportional logic statement. Now, when you are using your rules to represent, I'll show you one example here, how to represent and rules and all. So here in one comma one, we can have this like there is no pit, negation of P one comma one. And here I can say that this example. Okay, there is a reason two comma one. So there is a reason two comma one. It actually means that there is a possibility of pit in either this or this. Okay. So reason two comma one implies this actually means either we will have a pit in two comma two or there is a pit in three comma one. So this is how we used to represent it. Okay, there is a reason to come a one. This actually implies there is a pit either will be in two comma one. You can even include one comma one, but that is already included. It is given that there is no pit in one comma uh, one comma one. If you want, you can include that in this knowledge base also. Okay, so what exactly happens now? Each time whenever a agent enters into a cave, each room when he is exploring will hit will get some uh, n number of rules. Okay, when an agent actually enters into one comma one, he knows that there is no pit, stringy smell or a breeze. So these things act as the rules. Okay, so all these rules will be added to the knowledge base. And next time when he found a breeze in this two comma one, he can just manipulate that. This actually implies either there is a uh, pit in two comma two or three comma one. And when the person actually enters into this place, Okay, that is stingy in uh, one comma two actually implies that there is a uh, umfers in one comma three or umfers in two comma two. So this is another representation. And also it also means that there is no stingy smell. Actually, there is no breeze in one comma two. So there is no breeze in one comma two actually means that there is no pit possibility in two comma two, right? When there is no breeze here, you don't have any possibility of pit over here. Okay, so with these two rules, we can say that there is no, the pit actually, uh, there is no possibility of having pit in this two comma two. So the pit exactly is present in three comma one. Okay, so this is how we try to relate the rules and find a resolution out of the rules. Okay, so this is very important. Uh, we'll be discussing about how to uh, in, infer any of the rules and how to find a uh, reasoning out of it in the next come in the next next videos. Okay, thank you.